Hi, subscribe to the Open Gate Show on YouTube. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Open Gate Show for Saturday, January 20th, 2024. Good evening. This is Iowa to the Natural Juice Master, also entertainer, telling you when you listen to Colin Blair on the Open Gate Show, you're on an upward trend. Best horse racing information, best tip, best advice, and also we'd like you to take a trip around Crossroad OTB Union Square for the best natural juices on a Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. So the best is recommended the best. We're going up. First, we, we get to the races. I should applaud the Jamaica Torbred Horseman Foundation. They're having a function on the 5th of February. It is well advertised. All you need to do is call the numbers and you get information, including purchasing tickets. The track and pool has gone to the dogs with only info information on the horses, their breeding, their trainers, their jockeys, and equipment, and of course, where their playthings were in the last 12 or 10 or so starts. That we can rely on. Whoever is previewing these races is very concerning in certain ways that aid really the facts on the matter remember the open gate show you listen you hear you learn it's likely you can come out a winner at the end of the day first race starts approximately 12 noon nine races first race goes 1100 meters or five and a half furlongs 10 declared for five of them up uh, well, the sale tag is 150 to 180,000, and Native Red 6,000 up was never won two races, are also eligible and also untouchable. Number two, Fire Apart, 12 year old horse who got back the figure eight and closed well over a very short distance on the 1st of January, going straight and a half furlongs, and at 72 to 1, closed a bit leaving the firm point to finish third, five and a quarter length behind uh, opponents. Um, could use soundness and get on the board again. Uh, these highly suspected set. Number three, Sensational Storm. Been using his races, well, seemingly, to gain fitness. And now stepped up the exercise. Um, is a better horse than this when okay and you need to remind that to be reminded sorry number four mule train not much speed here so he will be close up and use that well think he can use that for his advantage well there's nothing here to quit for the pace to quicken and leave him flat footed so um he should be the one to beat especially that he could be more physically sounder than all. Number six, the crushing power gets the wood equipment for the first time, hoping uh, he can hold his speed towards the winning post and get a place on the board. Number nine, Robinson Bolo, mm, a possibility for a low exotic share. Number four, though, new train from number three, Sensational Storm, number two, Fire Apart, number six. Russian power, number nine, reminiscent, Bolo. The second race, the restricted along four for made about five years and up was only won twice. An imported five years and up was only won one race, seven declared. Same journey as the first, five and a half furlongs or 1100 meters. Number one, Rose of the Warrior, 
capable of fighting this out, even though this race is on the curve. She's trained by a much underrated trainer in Anthony Smith, a good man as well as a good horseman. Number three, Storm McCarm, first of two here for trainer Patrick Lynch. The rider who is still on, Prince Ola, with Fall at the furlong point the last time, that's the 26th of December, going five from straight on 4 9 to 1, uh, was fighting it out for the lead at the furlong point and ended up third, five lengths behind marketplace. Rose the Warrior it was much lighter than he then. Um, a storm comes only. Well, normally only once most times, but there are exceptions. Number four, Jupiter Man. Odds when last race were long. Were, well, words long, I should say. But the, the previous odds were, were long. And um, so uh, that's shown that something is a plus for this horse. Um... Maybe this man from Jupiter is planning to make a landing soon. Maybe, I said. He is the class of here. Well, he, well, he has back class, I should say. Number six, Sugar, Sugar, Sugar Daddy went out off the leash by Apprentice Barrett with first time blinkers to break his maiden on the 30th of December going six furlongs. Um, opened up seven lengths at the, at the furlong point and ended up only a length and a half in front of in front of opponents. Up in grade for this and could be still sweet enough to win. Number six, Sugar, Sugar Daddy. Number one, Rose of the Warrior. Number three, Stopper Come. Number four, Jupiter Man. One of those four should surely win. Third race, five and a half furlongs again. First three races are five and a half furlongs, or 1,100 meters. So this one is for trailing up, though. It's an optional claim in $450,000 to $550,000. Nearly about six years was only won three races, and imported six years and up was only won twice. Are eligible. Six of them will be, will be running, or should be running. Number one, Victoria's Medallion. Two here for trainer Leroy Tomlinson. The other is... Number two, Wilson, recent claimy who has won four of last five starts, all impressive, but facing a bit more competition this time with 57 kilos, seeking a four timer consecutively. Well, the only other danger is number three, a regnant who is still in the race due to issues, and is another here who has been recent claim and also facing a little bit tougher in, 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 in a sense. Ain't much here though. And uh, Regnum can fight this out if it's like old. Number four, Soul Amy are looking, I should say, much better each time the source uh, runs from the new band. Before that, uh, he looked awful. Can earn again. Number five, Sixth Avenue. Has number two with the number four soul aim to overcome. Number two or three. I'm setting number three, Regnant, from number two. Wilson. Number four, Soul Amy, number five, Sixth Avenue. I'm I'm expecting number two or three to fight it out. And number four to get the third slot of Soul Amy. And number five, Sixth Avenue for fourth. Subscribe to the Open Gate Show with, with Colin Blair in Jamaica. Goldstream, listen to this guy and other race trucks. He's a very good guy at the talk at race horses. Race four goes six for us, what twelve hundred meters. It's a restricted allowance two for nearly about three hours was only one twice. Sorry, was only one once and imported children up who are maidens. Seven declared. This is the Rimsky trophy. Rimsky, a long maned, well muscled, fierce looking compact colt. Uh, trained 
by Alan William, then groomed by a man I only knew him as Shirley, and owned by Tony McKenzie, Neville Anderson, and normally writes this well imposed looking cold. Uh, I must say, and repeat it again, it's always a pain to read the previews, the previews on these two old maiden races. As a matter of fact, and maybe all the races. I don't know who is doing it, but you know, it, it really le- leaves a lot to be desired. Anyway, number one, Richard Starags, a debutant, born the 21st of April at Chestnut Philly by Union Rags, out of Place the Vosge by Pleasantly Perfect. Hamak Farms own Philip Fiani with the trains, Frederick and May Constructions are, uh, are the breeders in the United States. Baron Murray, Murray the groom, Dean Dawkins will rise. Richard Starags coming along, but uh, uh, ain't ready for these yet. We'll have the visor and tongue tie. Number three, Fun Can Don, another US debutant. This horse was born April the 13th, to be caught by Clint, out of Fifty Shades of Fun, by Empire Maker, Carlton Watson, owns Jason Acosta, the champion trainer, the last two seasons. Uh, trains, Phyllis Adair and Connor Brown, Bill Adair, or the breeders, the groom, guard, pennant, Shimmy Moore, really rides highly thought of American code who should take these to have fun with. That's LASIK for his debut run. Number four, Cleopatra Queen gets the visor on after that debut on the 30th of December, showing nothing. Number five, Amazing Force, the other Fianni horse here. Also, U.S. bred, was born the 9th of May. Be caught by Leo Frick, out of White Wedding, by Crimson Guard. ACK stables are the owners. Tracy Egan, the breeder in the United States. Keith Johnson, the groom. Kevin Foster gets the call. Uh, this Flipsiana horse is a better horse at present than number one, which is the rags. And I'm expecting if I also get a piece on the board, tongue tie will be on. Number six, also smart, has to improve after the very a week set on the 10th of December. Um, beaten by four lengths, but nothing much should be able to improve and do her best at present. Number seven, Katie Strong, four-year-old uh, U.S. importee who was raised only twice, still a maiden, surely, uh, making his third start, making her third start tomorrow, so she should have improved a bit to get to play a low placing on the board. Number three, though, fun can done. Number five, Amazing Force, number seven, KD Strong, number six, who oh, so smart. We are at race five, five for long straight, or a thousand meters straight. It's made a condition race for Native Bird Force and up nine declared. Number two, cruising again. Unfortunate cold who sustained a leg issue coming out of that race on the 23rd, 22nd of April last season. I like most youngsters on the racetrack. There are a lot of things happening, bone issues and other like issues. I was deeply hurt learning of same after the race as I had high thoughts of, of this horse's future. I'm hoping he can still do okay as this owner is a pain owner, not much of those around. I still have a bridal to give him back a new one, but at present I'm not able to. So all the talks and whatever should be retained or eradicated. Number three, Mani Slam. Mm, what a name. This is a debutant, the Furl Dark Day Brown Coat, bred sensational slam out of Breezy Adlai by Casual Trick. Metro Dawn Racing, all is Patrick Lynn Strain, Valerie. Marlow, the breeder, very interesting, the sister of trainer Michael Marlow, Delroy Blake, 
the the groom veteran jockey George Samudo will be riding. Two workouts, both slow, and this horse is said to be well, said by the track and pool. He is working fluently. Well, let's see, as he or she can guess, and one day their guess will come through when they say, hey. Number four, the princess showed some value last out, but the third it was Sunbo going far from straight with Dave Dawkins, who remains and close up to be second, three and a quarter length to have with Sunshine. Um, recently changed tables. When I say recently, I'm talking in September. Uh, owner, trainer, and everything. And um, should be able to figure out, seeing that she is figured out, evidenced by that last race for trainer, owner, Baron Ken Bernard, can fight this out. Number five, military grade, well-built city, who should improve on the last one. Took a while to start, uh, first start of the 19th of November, and dramatically improved on the 10th of December to run a very good race, finishing second and led by Ancrutri Alexei. Should be a leading contender, and I'm expecting his horse to be fighting it out for the win. Number six, Valike Vicky, quietly back on last, uh, well, returning back to the uncertain enclosure, the last twice the fourth race, uh, she came back a bit iffy. And if, well, you know, she's quickly back for this, so mm, I don't know. The trainer, well, this horse is from the same camp, Ron Matty and his son, who has, well, both are from Ron Matty's stable. And the seven atomic energy has more chances than all here by far. Gets Devin Foster recalled, and also the blinkers. Number nine is Allophonic Steel. Run okay, getting a spot on the board to play. Last twice, he, uh, uh, she ran both out the straight, back out the same, the, the same course, could again figure somewhere in the top four. But number five, military grade for me. Over number four, Zane's Princess. Number two, cruising again. Number seven, Atomic Energy. Number nine, Xylophonic Steel. Race number six, 10 declared. Six furlongs or 1,200 meters. It's four, four is and up. It's an optional claim race, $250,000. Six of them up who have only won twice, and nearly about five of them up who are still maidens. Those are eligible. Number one, my Smokey. Only needs to run similar as on last at the same distance on the 26th of December, six furlongs, and led and just got touched off in the second for the win, rather, ahead in front of Lion Talk. Number three, last dance was prominent on the 13th of January, this last week, going five and a half furlongs and stayed on to be third, seven and a quarter lengths to time people and Anika Bell. We'll try going on the front as that's the norm with Trevor Simpson. And if okay, can run well enough to get in the top three. Number four, Party Princess could gain a low spot. Number five, ride with the mob. Not showing much interest in riding with the mob of late, but could be interested now and get a middle order slot at least if focused to do so. Number six, Golden Emperor, very unpredictable and could get back to competitive ways for a placing in the top five. Number seven, Heart of a Lion, kept protected from the sales market after doing woefully poor since being claimed on the 16th of July, 2023, for half a million dollars. Number eight, Jamal James, surely not himself since April of last season, and racing only three times, not doing that well in those. Number nine, Smarty Tradition, was put in, well, put on a short break after being claimed on the 29th of October, and almost a month now, this horse came back to run, and with all the rage at nine to five, that was on the 25th, 
sorry, the 25th of December, going five and a half furlongs, shot up a bit and flattened to be four to nine and a half lengths behind smoke haze by the princess and heart of a lamb. Number one, logically, my smoky. Number three, last chance. Number six, that's golden emperor. Number five, ride at the mob. Surely number nine, smarty tradition could move up in my selection, then you know, come to think of it. We are at race seven. It's the main special weight race for native red chill. Phillips only nine declared. Six for long about twelve hundred meters. A lot of five and a half and six for long races uh, on the card tomorrow. Number one, a plum. I've been kept up on the exact track after running evenly on debut at the tenth of December, going four from straight finishing fort. Five and three quarter lengths behind uh, also Smart, Brownie Brownie, Kensio. Should be on the improve. Number two, Brownie Brown, with only a length and three quarter behind number one, a plum, and came back in another race and showed no improvement. Number two, Lady Lauren, getting late six now after the third place finish on debut, the 17th of December, finishing 11 and third. Two interesting times ahead and oil machine. Number six, Rosetta. I thought this filly would have already broken her maiden. Yeah, maybe can do that just now. What happened last out? Whew. 26th of December going a mile, albeit in the prestigious Jamaica two year stakes, going a mile. Um, finish way behind, you know, almost a furlong. Uh, very distressed. Could it be that because she, she drew one on a slappy track, uh, she got mud dashed in her face or whatever? Well, uh, it's likely she was hampered by that inside, that inside draw facing the slops for the first time. That's the opinion of the Open Gate show. And you could make a mention now, well, should. Number seven, Rachel Manning. A debutant here, a chested filly, born the 24th of March by Admiral Alex, by Recralia, by Dodgedam, Stephen Lawrence, owns the source in his born train, Shana Lee Johnson, the breeder, Anthony Watson, the groom on the morning's ride, good sized chestnut who needs time, uh, not much though. Number 80 off, debuted on the 19th of November, and um, led opening up four lengths on the curve and started weakening at the furlong point onwards and finished four to three and a quarter length behind Buttercup, Blue Sensation, and Matusa. All went on to win after. Um, when I went to look at this horse, well, not look at this horse, I went to the Ian Passard farm and saw this horse was a wheeling. I had a lot of liking for her. Something must have gone amiss because she's just coming back, that's tea off, and, and working well. On the 7th of January, galloped four furlongs in 49 flat. Number eight, tea off. Number six, Rosetta. Number four, Lady Lauren. Number one, a plum. Number two, Brownie Brown. Top four selections. One of those should win, as a matter of fact. The one, two, three should come from one of the top four. That's number eight, Tioff. Number six, Rosetta. Number four, Lady Lauren. Number one, a plum. For the minor place in number two, Brownie Brown. The ultimate race. Race number eight has ten declared. Five for round or thousand meters long. Children up optional claim the race this. For three hundred to four hundred thousand. Six year olds was not an up wasn't one four races. And six year olds imported horses and up wasn't one three races. Those are the ones that were eligible. Number one, sure curling claimed from last and facing a wee bit weaker here, in my opinion. 
could do good enough and fight for a top three spot. Number two, three card guy being consistent on the board and should continue. Number three, land talk consistent since the summer of last season. Now up in grade with 57 kilos, have more to find for the win at least. Number four, Monaco. Last two races, he came out of it looking iffy. Was a late on starter in his intended start on the 10th of 10th, that's the last time. Race four, goes six furlongs or 1200 meters. It is named the Rimsky Trophy. Rimsky, a long mane, well muscled, fierce looking compact cold, trained by Billy Williams, groomed by uh, well, the person I only know most surely, and often ridden by Neville Anderson. This horse was won by former many time champion only Tony McKenzie. All is a pain to read the preview on these three old maiden races. As a matter of fact, most of the races, the previews, whoever is writing them, uh, he or she, uh, they leave a lot to be desired. Some declared for this. Number one, Richard Sturag, a debutant, a U.S. bred horse, born the 21st of April, a chestnut filly by Union Rags, out of place the Vogue by Pleasant Perfect, Pleasant Perfect, rather, Hammock Farms' own Philip Ciani Odi Jones. Frederick and May Constructions, they bred the horse in the States, Baron Murray, Murray the groom, Dane Dawkins will ride. Richard Sturag is gradually coming back to rag from rags to riches, but we we'll need a bit more time. We'll have some time. Number three, Fun Can Don, another US debutant. This one is born the 13th of April, a big cold by Clint, out of 50 Shades of Fun by Emperor Maker. Carlton Watson owns Jeff Costa trains. Philip and Connie Brown and Bill Adair bred this one in the United States. Got Pennant the Groom, Shaman Moore rides. Highly thought of American Colt who should take these to have fun with. Guess Lasix for this debut run. Number four, Cleopatra Queen, another US debutant. This horse was born the 16th of March, be fitted by St. Patrick's Day. Sorry, what am I saying? This is not this horse race already. This also has the visor on after this one showing. The only time he ran that for 30th of December. Number five, Amazing Force, another US debutant here. This was born in 9th of May. A big call by Leofric, out of White Wedding Day by Crimson Guard, ACK Stable, Old Flip Fiatti Train, the other Flip Fiatti was here, Tracy Egan, the breeder, Keith Johnson, the groom, Kevin Foster Rides. Uh, this Flip Fiatti trainee is a better horse at present than number one, which is the Rags and should be able to get on the board. Number six, also smart, has to improve after devouring a weak set on the 10th of December, and improvement should obviously be expected. Number seven, KD Strong, third career starts tomorrow, and uh, so she could, she should improve a bit, um, I'm thinking. Number three, fun can done, number five, amazing force. Number seven, KD Strong, or number six, oh, so smart. Race five, five for all straight or a thousand meters straight. So Made a condition race for nearly about four and up, nine declared. Number two, cruising again, unfortunate cold who sustained a leg issue coming out of the race on the 22nd of April last season. I like most youngsters. Uh, of, uh, at present, they're having leg issues. Some bad, some ain't, some need a long time to recover. Maybe they don't recover back to what was expected, but recovery is recovery, and I hope Cruising again has recovered to earn some money for this owner who is a pain owner, and we must always protect these owners who are pain, because it ain't that such these days especially among the smaller trainers. Uh, number three, Man Islam, a debutant. This is, four, this is a four-year-old brown bay coat by Sensational Camp Slam, out of Breezy Adlai. 
by Casual Trick. Metro Dawn Racing owns Patrick Lynn's trains. Valerie Marlow, sister of trainer uh, Michael Marlow, um, Brett DeSorge, Deborah Blake, the groom, veteran jockey George Samudo. Uh, he will ride. Well, according to the, well, the fact is as if two were out, both very slow, and this horse is said to be by the tracking pool, and he's working friendly. And um, a favorable run is expected. Well, let's see about that. Number seven, Zen's Princess showed some value last out as the 30th of December, went five for them straight, coming off a brief respite, finishing second, three and three quarter length to have a Sunshine and a value for next team who's here again behind by a length and a half. Uh, so Princess has, has changed owner and trainer since the 23rd of September and it's, it's, well, it looks that uh, this trainer Bernard has found out this horse and I'm expecting this horse to fight out the finish along with number five military grade who is a well-bred filly who just doubled recently, the 19th of November, and has progressed well by the 10th of December to finish second the length behind Crucial Alexa. Should be able to fight this out, as the work that worked last week, Saturday, the 30th of January, 36th was fairly easy. Number six, Valiki Vicky, quickly back from that dismal display last week. Um, well, the last two, twi the last twice this filly ran, she came back out of the race a little easy, on route back to the to her stables. Number seven, Atomic Energy has more chances than all here by far. Gets back to Vin Foster and also the Blinkers. Number nine, Valophonic Steel ran okay getting a spot on the board um, to play a bit of music the last twice. Both races were out the straight, back out the, back out the similar route, could again figure. I'm selecting number five, military grade, from number four, Zon Princess, it could go either way. Uh, well, I should think military grade uh, uh, has more scope to improve at present. Number two, cruising again for third, number seven, Atomic Energy. With number nine, Valophonic Steel. Number six, Felica Vicky. Got out of straight now at the shorter distance. Could surprise me and get a place in, on the board. That was one of two for Trainer Ron Matty. They ought to be number two. Cruising again. Ten declared for the sixth race. For three, four is an up. The optional claim is 225,000. Six fields and up was only one twice. And native red farrows who are means uh, eligible. Number one, my Smokey only needs to duplicate that run at the same distance. The last time this horse ra raced, the 26th of December, uh, led and fought on well all the way from the tree for long point, but lost by a head to land talk. Number three, last dance was prominent. 13th of January, that's last week, going five and a half furlongs finishing, third, seven and a quarter length. I mentioned that because it's a, it's a return to form. We'll try to go with the front enders, and that's the norm with Trevor Simpson's mount. And it's okay and could run well. Maybe more focus this time than last. Who knows? Number four, Party Princess could gain a low exotic spot. Number eight, Ride with the Mob. Not showing much interest in riding with the Mob of late, but could be interested now and get a middle order to lower order slot at reasonably good odds. Number six, Golden Emperor. Very unpredictable and could get back to competitive ways for a top five placing. Number seven, Heart of a Lion. Kept protected from the sale market after doing woefully poor since July 16, 2023, when he was claimed for half a million dollars. Number eight, Jamal James, 
surely not himself since April of last season, and as well as three times since that victory, and not being ordered well in all those three. Number nine, Smarty tradition was put on a short break after being claimed on October 28th. And although you know, almost a month came back to race on the 26th of December, going five and a half furlongs was all a rage at 95, showed up briefly, um, turning into home, but flattened to be 10 and a half and fourth to out of class smoke is. Um, he's back and I'm expecting a, a, a better run against these leaves. Number one, my Smokey, number three, Last Dance, number six, um, where am I? Sorry, number nine, Smarty Tradition, number six, Golden Emperor, number five, Ride at the Mob, and, um, uh, number four on the bottom end. We are at race seven, and we have eight, nine declared, yes, nine Phillips for native bread. Phil is only the main special weight race. Six rounds or 1,200 meters. Number one, a plum being kept up on the exercise track after running evenly on debut that was on the 10th of December, finishing fourth, five and three quarter lengths to also smart. Brownie Brown, who is here also in this race, and Kenthia. Um, should be improving, don't you think? Yes, and could bear some watching here. In, in a race that, um, well, the underpost favorite, Rosetta number six, really ran poorly, last out, albeit. Number two, Brown and Brown, was only a length and three quarter behind number one, a plum, in that race on the 10th of December. Um, Brown and Brown came back and uh, making seasonal debut on the 6th of January and ran very poorly. It doesn't augur much for for this one. Number four, Lady Lauren, getting late for this after that third place finish on debut on the 17th of December, finishing 11th and 3rd to interesting times ahead on oil a machine. Number six, Rosetta. I thought this video would have already won. Well, broken her maiden. Uh, can't do just here, no. What happened last out? Hmm. On the 26th of December, in the Jamaica Tour Stakes, finished last, almost by a furlong. What happened? I don't know. But the Open Gate Show is going to take a guess. She drew one in the slops, and uh, chances are either she or both her and her rider had visibility problems. That is just my guess. Buck working okay, and I'm expecting her to fight this out for the win. Number seven, Rachel Manning, a debutant, born on the 24th of March, just a filly by Admiral Lex out of Riquelina, no, Riquelina, by Dodgem, Cleveland, Cleveland Lawrence, owns Edith Brown Trains, Shanley Johnson, the breeder, and to the Watson, the groom, all these money will ride. Good size chestnut, Philly, who needs time, but not much though. Number eight, Tioff, debuted on the 19th of November last season and returning now. Working well, January, January the 7th, went 4 for 49 flat for, uh, to prepare for her season debut. Did like uh, seen her uh, as a wheeling on the farm of the Passage. And I'm, I'm expecting this horse to do well, you know. Coming to it, she had a lot of speed in that race on the 19th of March, um, when that race was won by Buttercup, Blue Sensation, uh, ran second, and Mentusa ran third, Tio finished fourth, three and three, three and a quarter length behind. Um, Something may have gone amiss, nothing major though, in that race. And I'm expecting this horse um, to be a sort of animal and run very well. Top four, number eight, Tioff. Number six, Rosetta. 
Number four, Lady Lauren, number one, a plum. Number two, Bonnie Bonnie, four, a very minor spot. Penultimate race, race eight, ten declared. Five rounds, one or thousand meters round. It's for three of them up. Optional claim in three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. Near about six of them up was only won three races and imported six of them up was only won twice are also eligible. Number one, Shaw Curling, claim from last and facing a wee bit weaker here, in my opinion. Could do good enough to fight for a top three slot. Number three, number two rather, three card guy, been consistent on the board and should continue. But at the lower end of this, a much tougher race than the last three races that this was ran in. But it's sound and it looks seemingly fit. Number three, Land Talk, consistent since the summer last season. Not up in grade 57 kilos, has a lot to find, but it's fit. But I don't think that. Um, she can he can win this race, but it will run well. Number four, Monaco. Last two races, he came out looking a bit iffy. Well, the late on start and is, is an intended start on 10th of December. But why is he kept protected instead of putting up for sale? Owner trainer Greg Fennell surely ain't short of cash. Very interesting, don't it? Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Number five, Sticky Don, should at least be in front of number three, Lion, Lion Talk, as on the, ninth, the 4th of November, going the very cheap of five for long round, won easily pulling away, beating that one by three and, three, three and a quarter lengths. Um, could be patient to wait it on, and you know, I'm expecting this horse to run a very good race tomorrow. Number six, this is Soup. Obviously, uh, we we'll try to make this a pole to pole affair. Now, back to her sale tag. She was bought and won quite easily. Number eight, Balgalriri. Getting back the tongue tie should suit, as when she had it on, she wasn't in a good frame of mind. Trainer Howard Jagai did a good job. And getting a more focused, and chances are getting back the customary tongue tie as well as Stephen Foster Stain, Balgul Riri could come to the fore before she retires to the breeding shed. Number nine, traditional boy, interesting gelding, and although with 57 kilos, has been running regularly and also training on the track, could factor somewhere in the top four, as maybe he will be more focused this time than previous. Tough race where all the top ones here run a similar running style and they will be banging up on number six as a soup, leaving the third on point to see who gets to the winning post first. Top five, one of these should, do, should surely win. As a matter of fact, three of out of five should surely get the trifecta. Number nine, traditional boy. Number six, as a soup. Number five, Sticky Dawn. Number eight, Bad Galarini. Number one, Short Curling. Well, one of those five. Maybe the I-5 could come from there. The last race, the final race, 1,100 meters or five and a half furlongs, 10 declared. It's a restricted allowance five. Eligible on 80 bed, four and up, with only one ones, and imported four and up, who are maidens. Number one, Fly Blue Jet came off a break and ran on the 13th of January last week. And when the gate opened, this three to five, three to three to two backed horse uh, was slammed by both horses on either side. Uh, they had to meander a bit twice. So uh, she lost a rhythm, but ended up third, four and a quarter length to the confidently presented speed here. And and Kismet, number seven, who is in this race, number six, rather, who is in this race. Um, John on the inside now, this horse gives me the impression that she's a bit shy, and that will negate uh, against her. I'm just guessing. Maybe the champion jockey.
could do what it takes and have this all settled and running well, barring any traffic. Number five, Uncle Nob. Coming off a sojourn. Last time this horse ran was the 7th of August last season and led in pole to pole fashion, winning, breaking his maiden by a head, beating Password and Slam Dunk. We'll be having first time Lasix and working well for his seasonal debut. Stephen Foster gets the call. And um, although up in class is very speedy and could prove difficult to get to peg back. The mistakes Kispet popped up surprisingly last time, last week, five from straight door, finishing second at 75 to one, three and a half lengths behind Speedy here, and five blue jets a length and a half behind her. This was her second run coming off a long sojourn on 19th of August. Um, they broke her maiden out this course, the five street course, and um, that was approximately 10 and, a half, 10 and a half months ago. But that last race really said something. And I'm sure you're thinking that she'll measure up and run just as good. Number seven, Dream Warrior, a different horse since getting Lasix, has a gait issue. But barring that, we'll be closing fast as he possesses a very good turn of foot and could get up in time to better these. Number eight, she's a mirage, very consistent, but no, very inconsistent. That's what I should say. I hope that's what you heard. But worked very well on Saturday, the 6th of January. Get about the gates, five following one minute and two fifths, first four in 48 and two fifths. Um, that's a very good work. That's the very good work. 14 seconds for the last furlong. And uh, that work was, was, wasn't really ridden hard. Number nine, Blinking Light should earn a low exotic slot. Number 10, Pretty Caroline, U.S. Importy, who hasn't gotten in the top three in her five career starts, could be ready to show her beauty tomorrow. Number seven, Jim Warrior. Number 10, Pretty Caroline. Number one, Flat Blue Jet. Number six, Kismet. The winner should come from, from that quartet. Number nine, Blinking Light. Number five, Uncle Knob for your exotics. Take care, good luck. Join me tomorrow afternoon when I'll try to help you with your selections for the Thunder Race card. This is Andrew Donalds out of sunny Florida, and I tune in on YouTube and subscribe to the Open Gate Show every Friday morning to get tips at Caymanas Racing.